What is up, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Is It Fun podcast. I'm here, as always, with my friend Trip. Trip, say hello. Hello, peoples. Fantastic. Uh, this week, we have some very, very exciting news. Um, I don't want to spoiler it, so we'll leave it for just a minute, so bear with us. But we're going to be talking about uh, an exciting game that's out right now. But before we get into that, let's talk about some things that you might want to keep on your radar that are coming out over the next couple of weeks. So, okay. yeah, Tripp, what, what is interesting that we should all care about in the next two weeks or so? Well, all right, uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, not a lot out ne next week other than the Berserk game that's uh, Dynasty Warrior style, but, uh, uh, but you know, sh uh, using the storyline of the Berserk anime or whatever. Sure, Very it's nice. a classic, yeah. Um, probably not anime, it's probably manga, but you know, you know how it is. Um, and then the following week, Horizon Zero Dawn, very exciting game, uh, supposedly, a uh, new IP for, uh, PlayStation 4. It does uh, look quite good from the trailers. Good. Yep. And anyone who ever played Planescape Torment should just be delighted beyond belief because the 28th is when Torment Tides of Numenera, the sequel to that game comes out. And that was the Kickstarter, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so if you like isometric RPGs, that is going to be your jam, hopefully. If you like awesome writing and uh, interesting combat and alternates to combat scenarios, all that stuff, storyline should be really, really fun for, for you. Uh, and yeah, really, there's not like, you know, not a huge amount. Uh, after that is near Automa Automata. Uh, is the Near 2 game that's coming out. So that's yeah. uh, also exciting. I actually played that demo and was quite happy with it. I mean, it was ridiculous, but that's the way it's supposed to be, right? Very over the top, yeah, but in a um, in a neat way. Uh, you know, all we've played is that demo or whatever, which kind of honestly showed what I what felt to me like almost three different games in one, almost, mm -hmm. but uh, three or four different games in one. But uh, all action-y and uh, all kind of fun. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what it shapes up to be as, a, as the real game experience. But yeah, that's, that's what you guys should be dealing with. The 28th of this month, 28th of February, Horizon Zero Dawn, Torment Tides of Numenera, one week later is near Automata. So fantastic. Exactly. Oh, and I mean, maybe if we're going to talk about that, we can also say that the same week the Horizon Zero Dawn comes out, the third is when the Switch comes out. But whatever, that's that's not Horizon Zero Dawn. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're lucky enough to have pre-ordered on a small window, yep, uh, you might uh, be like getting some, a Switch. Yeah. Some right. people might have gotten lucky. Some people might have <laughs> <laughs> you know, which I could go on a kind of side note about that, talking about how uh, manufacturers need to stop with the bullshit with that stuff, right? Like, I agree. I think that's nasty. But to me, it's not the manufacturer's fault. I mean, whatever. Like, I usually feel like, you know, they're stupid to not put out as much as they possibly can. You know, they may, yeah. like, if they're worried they're wasting money or whatever, they may be trying to feel out the market a little bit. But I don't think that would be Nintendo's move. The problem w that we have that people need to rise up against and really fight is the fact that people will purchase a lot and sell it on eBay back to you. So right. they deny you the opportunity to get it because they purchased it from the store and then they're selling it on eBay at a, at a much higher price, which to me is just the very soul of Monstrous. But whatever, you know, maybe there's some killing fields in Cambodia, but that's not the point. <laughs> I know. I mean, I've seen many people post stuff like, oh, I finally got six of these and, you know, I'm going to definitely turn them around on eBay. Yeah, and, keep them for myself and then five on eBay. I'll make up the cost of it easy. Oh, you monster. Really? <laughs> Yeah, well, five more people could have just had one if you'd have just bought one. Yeah, it's just blows my mind. Anyway, anyone who buys one of those is not helping the problem at all. I don't care how much your baby wants it. Anyone who, you know, justifies, works with those people, validates their action, that's awful. But yeah, that's my that's my opinion on that. So, looking forward to getting the Switch at some point. Trip will have it. The wild is what we're looking forward to getting, but yeah. Yeah, basically that one game, but... <laughs> It's I think, comes in as neat too. Yeah, and I think it'll be good enough to to merit a system buy for that game. I mean, if you have the the means. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously it's not a priority for a lot of people, but Yeah. Okay, so in the downtime, now that you're in the know of what the next few weeks look like, what you should be doing right now is you should be playing Neo. 
because it came out, what was it, two weeks ago? I think it was just one week ago. Oh, has it only been that long? Okay. Wait, the seventh? One week ago, yesterday, yep. Yes, one week ago. So Neo's been out about a week. And if you're not actually playing Neo right now, I just don't get you as a person. Yep, like any moment that you're not playing Neo. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, I'm kind of upset with myself that I'm not playing it. <laughs> um, if you like that this style of game, then man, you're in for a treat. It's it's very good. Yeah, so, so Neo released last week. It is a... And I think this is the, the the best way to describe it, but doesn't pick up all the intricacies of it. So it's it is a souls ish game mm -hmm. uh, that has many aspects of other games peppered into this stew of what it is. Right? It's yes. um it has qualities of like Diablo even sure. from from the item system. It mm -hmm. has obviously qualities of Ninja Gaiden because. Yeah. Yep. Team Ninja, uh, you know, developed it. Yep. Um, has a lot of Souls feel to it. I mean, and there's even some uh, other games as well that, that kind of influence this game. I think it's the culmination of a lot of hard work and taking feedback from the market over the years since Ninja Gaiden. Well, we've talked several times this these past few months about games that have been in the cooker for a really long time. Final Fantasy uh, 15 was one of them, and... Um, Last Black Guardian was, was absolutely one of them, and this one is one of them. This one was originally announced uh, like as a PS3 launch title, I think, and um, that you know didn't happen. It worked for it for one reason or another, and uh, I'm glad. I'm pretty glad. I saw some really early videos of it, and it didn't look exciting to me at all. Um, but uh, yeah, this what what we ended up getting is just awesome. But yeah. Yes. So so, so in, in this episode, for the rest of the episode, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some in-depth Neo stuff. Um, so after we've, we, you know, we had the disclaimer of we think it's very good, we think you should be playing it. So now we're going to get it kind of into spoiler territory. So um, if you think that you want to go pick it up and take a look at it, and you like that discovery and you don't want to hear any more about it, then go ahead and click off. Uh, because we're going to be talking about some of the things. I mean, it won't be too bad, but... <clears throat> we will be talking about some things that will spoiler it for you if you're into that kind of discovery thing. So, um, so yeah. So my first impressions was, um, man, it's hard. So, so I, uh, so I got in and uh, played the demo the weekend before it came out, and I thought it was very amazing. I thought the boss in the demo was very hard. Um, I think it took us eight or nine tries to get get through that on my game. Yep. Um, and then the, the game released, and I mean, I've died upwards of 300 times at this point. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, think I'm right there with you. Yep. Um, it, it is certainly not a light um, experience. No, it's, it's I mean, it's, 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 again, it's using the Souls formula or whatever. So the looking at it from that perspective you have, it's a learning thing, you know, like knowing exactly what you're doing in the game and exactly the level layout and exactly how everything works. Like you can basically run through a level with, you know, no deaths. You're not going to die because you know what's happening or whatever. You know how the enemies work, you know how the boss works, you know how the levels work, you know what's going to jump around or behind this corner. You, you know, you know, what, which one of these is going to be a plank that drops you through the floor into an enemy room that kills you or whatever. So like, yeah, like you, you pick up on a, all that stuff and it's very much a learning experience. And to me, that's what makes it such a rich experience, just like all the Souls games, um, which again, this is not made by From Software or anything, but we put it in the, the Souls category or whatever, just like Lords of the Fallen and any Dark Souls game. But um, yeah, so... Uh, the thing is, like, that learning experience is what makes it so good because you're going to die to learn. You know, yep. you run into a room, you die. You say, well, don't do that next time, and you run into the room and do something different, and you die. <laughs> and don't do that either. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, so it's just, uh, it's it's a building experience, and it, that's what's so wonderful about it. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I would say that uh, it's got the Dark Souls heart to it, you know, and then, and then, and Team Ninja has surrounded it with a hundred other really awesome qualities too. That that uh, that you know, put a twist on the formula of Dark Souls and enhance it in many ways. Yeah, I think um, 
it's super rewarding when you finally do learn and get through that one hard area. I think there was one boss in particular, and I remember I was on voice chat with, with you guys, and I was just sitting there for a solid three hours dying over and over to this one boss, just over and over and over. And I wasn't even mad because there's a lot of situations in games where you die or something and you're like, oh, that was bullshit. Like the game cheated me or cheesed me, right? Yeah. But in this game, it's not really that. It's like when you die, you're like, oh, I screwed that up, you know? Don't get me wrong. Some enemies are full of absolute garbage, full to the brim of absolute garbage. But <laughs> for the most part, it's going to be a situation where you can recognize it, you know, that you did something wrong. Yeah. Uh, objectively, you can say, all right, I'm angry, but I've seen him set up for that move 80 times. And I keep dodging left when I should have dodged right, type of thing. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Um, one interesting difference between this game and Dark Souls that I've kind of been thinking about, like Dark Souls is like you run in there and you learn a enemy. You learn how an enemy works. Um, this one is more about the combat system, though, which I think is such a richer experience for for a game player or whatever. Because like if you learn like really well the combat system, most of the bosses are humanoid. Uh, Whereas in Dark Souls, most of the bosses were, um, you know, there were, of course, humanoid bosses where your gameplay mechanic, your fighting mechanics came into play more. But um, in, in, in Neo in particular, it's just like your ability to dodge, your ability to parry, your ability to, um, you know, sidestep and backstep and, and everything else that, you know, and your individual weapons, moves and everything and skill sets uh, kind of come into play a lot more than I feel like they did in Dark Souls. Yeah, I would uh, agree with that. It was very much running up to the enemy and mashing the button. Um, well, I le learning, uh, I learning, yeah, I learning the very specific enemy mechanics and running yeah, up yeah. to the enemy during a very convenient opening and mashing the button. Right, right. This right. one is is much more in depth fighting, hugely more in depth fighting system, which I think makes it um, just a more engaging experience on that level as well as the fact that it's the the formula we love. Yeah, and certain enemies will be uh, weak to certain stances because there's stances in this game. You have mid, low, and high stance uh, for all the weapons. So all the weapon types, I think there's seven, six, five. Wow. Okay, so five weapon types. and Well, I only use the katana, so that's, that's yeah, why. Why I, would you use anything else? It's over yeah, it's, ri it's ridiculous. But um, <laughs> So five weapon types. Each weapon type has its own three stances, low, mid, and high. So the variation. So like in the Souls games, you'll get a broadsword and the broadsword itself has a particular set of moves and then you'll get a rapier and then it'll have a particular set of moves. So yeah. every weapon has its own set of moves, but in, but in this you have base weapon types and then you have three different stances for each one. So really the variety is pretty huge when you think about it. It is huge. I mean, to, to be fair, dark souls like had a greater weapon variety and probably a greater move set variety to be fair. But this game has greater, what am I saying? It's it's more granular with each weapon. You know, mm -hmm. like there's, as you said, three different move types. There's a heavy attack and a weak attack. There's a uh, three, I'm sorry, three different stances, heavy attack, weak attack, and then innumerable skills that um, that come into play in various different ways, both passive and active and everything uh, with your weapon. So uh, it's this is just a much deeper fighting system. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. which, which makes it better to me. And it certainly rewards practice with each one of those weapons and stuff. Like if I were to switch weapons right now, I probably would be awful at the game, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would have to like go back and practice and get good enough to be able to get through, you know, to have a chance of going up against some of the enemies I've gone up against. Like my understanding of the enemies, my understanding of the, the game in general uh, will have enhanced my ability to proceed, obviously, even with a brand new weapon. But the whole new weapons move sets timings, how hard they hit, whether it's worth it to hit at that moment in that time. Um, you know, that's, that's something you got to learn based on the individual weapon, which, which to me speaks to replayability more than anything else. I'm not going to switch weapons in the middle of the game here. Yeah, absolutely. And so add to that now mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you get loot dropped Diablo-esque. Like, loot drops all the time, constantly. Just Almost everything drops loot. Just like if you've played Diablo or any type of like uh, action RPG like that, uh, what's another good one that I can't think of right now? Diablo, um, Path of Exile, Path of Exiles. Thank you. Yes, uh, Path of Exiles. Um, Grim Dawn. Yep, Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn. Thank you. That was the one I was trying to think of. Yeah, any of those type of games, like you get in, you get loot thrown at your face all day long, and this is 
just very similar volume of loot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'll get the same sword 58 times. Yep. But each one of these items can have a certain quality. There's four levels of quality. Five, if you count New Game Plus. Yep. <laughs> um, and each one of them will have its own randomly generated stats and Based special on the effects. Of the weapon. Yeah, like let's say a white weapon will have two slots that are randomly generated. A green, uh, whatever, a blue weapon will have three slots or four slots. Well, anyway, it's it builds up to purple, but yeah, or green, but yeah. Yeah, and add even on top of that... Each weapon has a familiarity bar, which builds as you have the weapon equipped. Yep. And will and those those that familiarity bar will modify your stats, will modify your um, the damage it does, all sorts of things, right? Yep. Which is yeah, and different abilities that you would. <laughs> it's so complicated, people. It gets so incredibly complicated so incredibly quickly. This is again, in many ways, a much deeper game than Dark Souls, just from a stats perspective, too. Like, there's so many numbers going into your character being, uh, you know, uh, being excelling at a certain thing or hitting harder in a certain way or whatever. And on top of the five weapons, the variety of weapon drops and everything else, there's three other major things, I guess. One is ninjutsu. Which is, other, a... Which is a whole other skill line. Yep. Uh, the other is onmyo magic. Which is a whole other skill line. Which I mean, those are similar. You know, those are kind of like uh, two sides of the same coin type of thing. One of them is is magicy and has all that stuff, and the other one is just bombs and shuriken and all that stuff. Um, and then the third thing is the guardian system in the game, which is very Pokemon. <laughs> it, <like> is, Pokemon. <laughs> it is. It's super good. Like I was thinking, there maybe be two, three, or four guardians in the game that you can equip, but no, there's tons. Yep. There's, uh, I, I'm thinking upwards of 20, but I might be wrong there. Um, I know you get a, uh, anyway, there's a lot, there's a ton. Um, and yeah, now these guardians come equipped with their own abilities that are unlocked by leveling up a certain stat that you can level up by gaining the currency of the game, which is Amrita in the game. But, um, souls. what? <laughs> souls. Yeah, souls, pretty much souls, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like you can level up a stat that will uh, specifically enhance your guardians exclusively, uh, their ability to fight alongside you. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. It's so many different stuff. And it's such a good game. It's, it's well laid out and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, so basically you've got the guardian spirit. You have your your stat points that you can unlock via via Amrita, which is the collector thing. So you unlock stat points. You have weapons you can do, uh, five different types. All this stuff, and on top of that, because there's we're still going. Okay, you have a blacksmith that can reforge the stats on a particular item. Yep. Can soul match a particular item to the level of another item and inherit certain abilities from said item. That you gotta figure out yourself, people. That's complicated. We can't explain it to you, but it, it's not it's in a way that makes sense. You just gotta do it, and you'll see it. <laughs> it's pretty deep. Just click the X button a bunch. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, and you can forge your own items based off of plans, and you can forge your own armor. You can refashion your items that you currently have equipped to look like any other item that you currently possess or yep. have possessed. Yep. So if you're wanting something to look a certain way, just yeah. Full cost of gold that is also gets thrown at your face all game long. Yep, and and we can even tuck in one more thing where there is a <laughs> clan based system, so you can get to choose your clan, right? And this is all PVE, mind you. There's currently no PvP in the game, even though they have announced that they're probably going to be releasing some of that via DLC. But yeah, but as of right now, this is this is all PVE we're talking about. Um, but you can join a particular PVE clan which will give you certain allotments and when you do clan battles, which are battles against revenants of the opposite clan. Uh, or you can get glory and uh, another currency, which will unlock titles and additional stat bonuses, a la Borderlands 2 and stuff like that. Yep. Oh, God. Um, I about that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there is so many ways to customize your character. And I think a good... I don't know, maybe 20% of the time I'm sitting there inventory managing and trying to figure out what I need to do just before the next level, right? 
Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not say twenty percent of the time. I would say it is a big chunk between levels, though. It is something you kind of got to deal with between levels. Which honestly, I think they put a lot of tools in place to make that less painful of a process. You know, there is a lot of inventory to manage, but you can, you know, if you know you like your stuff, you know you don't have anything better. You, it's real easy just to sell it all or just assemble it all, which gives you different parts, which you can use to forge new equipment, and which you can also use to modify your current equipment stuff. It's insane the number of options you get just to make exactly the character you want fighting in exactly the way you want. Um, there are obviously some, you know, best practice uh, kits that you can set yourself up with and, you know, the best stats and the best weapon, which is Katana's, and... Um, Mm -hmm. everything <laughs> but uh yeah like it's it's an incredible number of options there's daily quests in this game i mean come on there's everything in this game <laughs> really yeah. just everything in this game they really did like it feels like they spent 10 years just adding crap to this game <laughs> yeah and uh so also like take all that into account you also have the option to co-op you can definitely pve Okay, which is which is Together. the multiplayer aspect of this game, which I would like to talk about for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's like normally in Dark Souls, you get to a bonfire, you get the ability to multiplayer or whatever. Which I don't remember what the gates are on that. Usually, it's like you have to get an item or you have to get yeah, just point write your write your sign down with the soapstone. Yeah, so you have to get the chalk to be able to write your sign down in Dark Souls. In this one, you have to get uh, little pots or whatever bowls or whatever. Uh, and then at the shrines, which is the dark, which is the Neho Neho equivalent of the bonfires, uh, at the shrines you can summon someone using the bowl. Uh, and the system's pretty solid. Like compared to Dark Souls, I think it's incredibly solid. Like it's not too crazily complicated. It's not too impossible. The only caveat is that you cannot uh, be summoned into an area unless you've already beaten the area. So that means, and this has bummed a lot of people out. People have been talking about it on Reddit a lot. Um, you cannot. Um, blind play through an area with your friend which is is sad or whatever that'd be cool but it's uh but that's the, really the only limitation to the pvp so you are sorry the the co-op pvp yeah uh, but yeah um otherwise it's just to me that any game that comes out that doesn't have a solid built from the built you know as a part of the game built into the heart of the game a uh solid pvp feature you know co-op sorry a co-op feature i keep saying pvp guys i'm sorry i'm stupid um a co-op feature in there where you can play along with friends you can play with comms or whatever uh to me that makes games these days you know why would you yeah. want to experience something along when you can experience it with friends type of thing right uh, but yeah so that's uh that's my spiel on that i feel like it's just got that one little thing that's that's a little off about it but the rest of it is awesome yeah, I've had a lot of fun doing it. I mean, either summoning into other people's games or having people come into mine. Um, it does take away some of the uh, the frustrations you might feel at certain levels. Say you're doing a random submission and it's just you know you're you're dodging poorly and you're just not having a good time with it. Having somebody come in there and help you run and run through it can really boost your morale and kind of get you back on the right track. You know, because yeah, in, in many ways, yep. Yeah, so it's a definitely a needed feature. Um, and hopefully, you know, we'll see some of this PvP stuff. I mean, I'm not personally into that, but I know a lot of people love it. And I know a lot of people love it in the Souls games. So, you know, let, let's root for them to put something in that would be actually, you know, worthwhile if when they decide to do that. Yeah, like the, the Dark Souls, I enjoyed it. I did not love it when you're fighting your way through an area and another person interrupts your game to try and kill you with the whatever nonsense they figured out that just immediately one shots you or whatever. That's not fun for me. You know, like I respect yeah. Dark Souls for doing it. I know it absolutely adds this like, you know, heart pumping, you know, uh, rush of a moment when you like get some guy and you're trying to fight him or whatever. Or girl, maybe girls are assholes too. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you like, you know, have to fight someone off or, and maybe you win and, and maybe probably you lose. But uh, yeah, like that's just not my style of game. A lot of people enjoy that. I don't. I don't love that aspect of Dark Souls. I play Dark Souls despite that quality to it. You know, um, yeah. so I hope they don't actually do anything like that with Neo. But uh, yeah, we'll see what they do with PvP. I'd be curious. I, I haven't heard much anything on it. I, I would imagine they would somehow implement it with the clan battles thing. I think it's it'll gotta, gotta be. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, all this content we've been talking about. It's coming from one game, right? Yeah. 
like we talk constantly and 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 trip and i have talked constantly and i see topics online posted all the time on reddit and other news forums like we're you know people are paying 60 dollars for a game and they don't feel like they're getting content or or like star wars battlefront getting launched with three maps and everybody like this is not worth 60 dollars. what the hell you know all of this content is coming from this developer in one game you pay one time um, I will say, like, it's, you know, we talk a, a lot about how awesome it is or whatever, but there are, like, a couple of hang-ups uh, to it. Uh, graphically, it's it's got a lot of awesome, like, special effects, but graphically, like, the environments maybe look a little dated, you know? Like, drab. They, they yeah. aren't super, um, like, just detail even, you know? Like, walking through a cave or whatever isn't special, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like, that, I think, honestly, environments did take a little bit of a backseat, Um to the game system, or not environments necessarily, but like graphic considerations, art considerations, took a bit of a backseat to uh, considerations of like, you know, making the game just a richer experience, which I'm fine with. Uh, but you know, if, if you like your games beautiful and, and, and just the cutting edge of graphic technology, this might disappoint you a bit, but uh, I don't think, it doesn't bother me at all, but it's just obviously ever so slightly dated, you know, in yeah. my opinion. Um, I will say the story, I usually pay close attention to the stories of these games. I'm usually very invested. I have hit start button to skip every single time, every single story that's come up here. <laughs> well, okay, alternatively to that, I have watched most of them, and I will say that it's pretty interesting. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's it's a... Obviously, it's kind of like a revenge tale, as, as games generally like to spin off of that, but... Um, there's lots of interesting stuff, and you'll notice um, a lot of interesting uh, historically accurate names of people. Not, not to say these are historically accurate people at all, but not conditions of the person, but no, or referencing historic people. <laughs> yeah. So if you've ever played any of the Samurai Warriors games, uh, you know from is it Tim Kokoi? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah sure. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah, but uh, you know you'll you'll see some of the same names re- recurring, right? Uh, yeah. Nobunaga Oda, Hitori Hanzo, all these things that are pretty. Uh, I think they're pulp culture uh, names now about that era. Like everyone kind of just assumes those names associate we, with that I era. Know, we have done a terrible job explaining the actual storyline, which I mean, we don't have to give anything away or whatever, but like essentially you are an Englishman, I guess, or he has yes. a strong accent, he sounds Scottish. Anyway, you're an Englishman who uh, was put in jail and you escaped from the jail um, using the help of your very first guardian spirit. Uh, and you escaped from the jail and you um, then events uh, transpire that you make your way to uh, Japan, where you basically uh, it's a ven- it's a re- it's a vengeance story again. You're trying to uh, get vengeance. Uh, someone has stolen something from you. You're trying to get back. You are helping different clans fight against a what a- essentially feels like a demon invasion type of thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, you have basically an English dude with a samurai sword in Japan, just being a general badass. So uh, that's that's really the the shape of the story. If if we, you didn't get that part, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, and they do a pretty good job outlining it. And the cutscenes have been very well done. There's been a few of them that have been really exciting. A couple have been quite boring, but most of them are really amazing. And if you take the time, each mission and submission will give you a little, you know, quest text basically. And if you do read all those, they all start making sense. Like it's telling a, you know, it's telling a story. Couldn't All the stuff you. goes into it. Really couldn't tell you. Yeah, but <laughs> but it does. It does. It actually does tell a pretty good story so far. Uh, I think I'm almost to the end. So, um, yeah, I've had a, an amazing time with it. I I cannot recommend the game more. Um, it's like the problems that I have with the game, I think, are either resolved in New Game Plus, which is apparently a whole new experience, not a whole new experience, but like a whole enhanced experience with a couple of a couple of different features added. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's really good. I would honestly say like, I hate the number system or whatever, but just as a point of reference, I would probably say like 9.5 out of 10, you know, like I don't have a problem yeah. with it at all. It's it's good. It's solid. And it's it's just, it's just, I don't know what I'm trying to think of here. It's it's quite easy to just sit down and enjoy it. 
you don't have to commit f- five hours to it or anything like that, but you can sit down and play a couple of missions and then walk away. It's easy. It's accessible. Yeah, um, I, would, I would definitely say that. Whereas, again, we always are comparing this type of game to Dark Souls because Dark Souls was the original type of game sure. like this. Uh, and so you will play Dark Souls and you have this open world, very open world, where all this interconnectedness and everything, and it feels like one place leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And this game is is separated into missions, just like Team Ninja's normal. Uh, not normal, I guess that's not fair to say, but it's it feels very like you know, uh, an action type of game, like what am I trying to think of? Like Devil May Cry or something, where you have different missions. There's that. Yeah. Uh, and it's very much not an open world, which I was honestly proud of. And I think, you know, the open world stuff started dropping with like, you know, Skyrim and all this stuff. And everyone jumped on that bandwagon of, oh, people people want a cohesive world. And not necessarily. This, does, this game does an incredible job without that feature. And sure. I think it's important that people remember that. Um, and the different areas feel incredibly unique. They feel... Uh, you know, fleshed out, I, I think is fair to say. Uh, interesting uh, scenery and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Now, I know a lot of you people watching this, you people, um, may be wondering, well, you're talking all this great stuff about it, and you're talking about the battle system and the items and stuff, but, like, I always want to be able to fashion my own character. And for you, dear viewer, there is a barbershop. You can fashion your character to your liking. There's a lot of barbershop, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will still be William, the English samurai living in Japan, but you can be f- at least four different variations of William. Couples of choices. <laughs> Couples of choices. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, kind of to wrap up here, I have had an amazing time with this game. I'm still playing it. I'm still enjoying it. I think I probably will for a while. Um, it's taken me out of my normal gaming routines. The games I normally play have been collecting dust because I've been having so much fun with this. It's it's easy to play, and it's easy to play with friends. Um, yep. Yeah. So if you have a PS4 and just the inclination to play an amazing game with it's challenging while at the same time being accessible in many ways... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would uh, heartily recommend this game to anyone. Yeah. All right. I think that wraps it up for this review of Neo. Um, I want to remind you guys to tune in next week where we're going to be discussing... Uh, what is it that we're going to be discussing? Probably, is it Paul Blart Mall Cop? Um, n- no. No. The in-depth not. movie review of Mall Cop? No? It doesn't sound like the move, Greg. <laughs> it sounds mm. awful what you said right there. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to be reviewing something, so (laughs) we'll see you guys next time. Not going to be that. Not with Kevin.